Welcome to Simplicity Server Redundancy Demo. What is server redundancy or host redundancy? It is the ability of having two servers acting together to run a single project. They work in a active and a standby pair with one node always acting as the current hot standby to the other one. When a failure is detected on the current active node, then the standby node takes over and all the client applications, that is the viewers, transition their requests to the new active node. All this happens without user interaction. In order to achieve server redundancy, Simplicity has to make sure that all of the core processes between the primary and secondary are synchronized. This means that they must have the same data and must be in the same state with regards to that data. This is achieved by setting up logical links between core processes on the nodes. For each of these core processes, there is an active process and a standby process. So what is required for server redundancy? The primary must be installed and licensed as server development. The secondary must have at least a server runtime license with the same point count as the license on the primary. Both nodes require the server redundancy option license. The systems should be similar in hardware specifications and limitations. Both servers will require their own database. An example here is the SQL database. Servers must be on the same network without a router between them. This is for viewer to server communications. And both nodes must be the exact same version and SIM. And how is it configured in the workbench of Simplicity? On the secondary in the redundant pair, you create a Windows network share. This is the location where the project will reside on the secondary. On the primary in the workbench, you enable server redundancy and point it to the network share on the secondary UNC path. So, how do the servers detect that a failure has occurred. The primary and secondary are constantly checking to make sure that the other node is still there. They do this by using a process called RTR ping. This is a process that's sole responsibility is to actively ping and respond to pings to and from the other node in the redundant pair. If a ping does not come back in the appropriate time frame, then an automatic failure is initiated. So this is how both the systems are online and in an active standby configuration. So in general, if you try to understand the different steps involved, first step, a redundant server pair starts up. Immediately, the active node starts to broadcast its information onto the network via a UDP broadcast. Step two, the viewer updates its cache with the relevant data and directs its communications to the active node. Now, when the failure happens, the secondary transitions to be the active node. The secondary starts to broadcast its UDP broadcast with the updated computer name. The viewer detects the change and redirects its PTM communications to the new active node. Now, let us see the actual configuration with the demo. So what you see here is uh, the primary node wherein I've created a project called Sim Project. And in the project properties, I have enabled server redundancy. And in the redundancy tab, I have to mention the 
remote server name and the remote shared location. So the right hand side, this is the secondary node with the shared path. So that's what exactly I have given here. And if you click on the test connection, it shows a success. Now, let me start the redundant pair. Before I do that, we need to do a configuration update. And when you do this configuration update, you would see that on the shared location, all the files get copied onto the secondary node, shared location. Let me start the projects. So all the processes get started on both the primary and secondary node. But at this stage, as I've shown earlier, primary node will be acting as the active node and the secondary as the standby node. So once the project starts both on the primary and secondary node, we can see a viewer connecting to this redundant pair. I'm going to show you an AMV O6 object on a simplicity screen getting alarms from this redundant pair and a point control panel looking at some point values. So this is the viewer node and in this viewer node, I'm going to start up a screen. And I'm going to log in. So you see the alarms from the redundant pair. Let me also start the point control panel. So this is the point control panel connected to the redundant pair, and you see the different point values getting updated from the redundant pair. Now, let me simulate the failover. So I'm going to stop just one of the projects. So this failover can be simulated either by stopping the primary project or it could be this complete node failover, node uh, failing, then the failover happens. So let me just stop the project. So now only the secondary is running and the primary has stopped, but you see that the viewer is still connected to the project and getting data. So let me start the primary project. So after this primary starts, you will see that the pure connection continues to be stable and getting data from the redundant pair, but the secondary will be the active node and the primary will be acting as a standby one. So this is pretty much the actual demo of the server redundancy. Just to look at some of the troubleshooting steps, if you happen to see any problems starting in the secondary project. So one of the most important things which you might need to do is that on both the redundant paired nodes and on the viewer, you need to add the node names and IP addresses of all the nodes to the Windows host file. This will enable the communications to happen seamlessly. And configure Simplicity HMS servers to run as the same user on both the nodes of redundant pair. Log into the nodes with the same username and ensure that the user has administrative privileges. And Make sure the shared folder which you created in the secondary has read and write privileges for this user. And sometimes if you have firewall on on your systems, make sure simplicity is properly integrated with firewall by adding all appropriate ports to the firewall exception list. Thank you.